Hello everyone, it's Kay here and welcome back to my channel. I've got a lovely little something that I'd like to share with you that I've just this minute finished. There are a couple of shout outs that need to be dealt with and, and I'd quite like to do, do those right at the very beginning. I've got some lace trim here for you to be looking at while I'm talking and marbling on and do feel free to fast forward but if you want to know details excuse my phone if you want to know details of what this has been used in and details of where to find what I've used then do um, check out what I'm about to say the first thing involved is this wonderful freebie from Artie Mays. Now as a lot of you know I do DT work for Andrea. I also hugely support her kits. I think they're the best best value. She's not paying me to say this. There is no um, <laughs> no intrigue in this whatsoever. This is my own opinion having used Andrea's kits for a long long time. It is by way of an advert, I guess you'd say, but having said that, I like to support things that I believe in and Artie Mays' store on Etsy and her channel, which is full to the brim with inspiration, are things that I support wholeheartedly. So this is the latest freebie from Andrea. And I have used that in the up and coming project. The other person that I need to mention is Hummingbird Tales. Having watched a video that Tina did by way of a tutorial for fabric snippets and what she did with it, I was inspired to go and follow and try what Tina had shared and this is the fabric snippet that Tina shows you how to make. I mean this is a little bit ropey I've got things that I'd need to anchor down but I've made two of these and I just wanted to utilize them if I bring them up to you. I've actually used eyelash trim various snippets of lace from embroidery on glaze to grippier lace to more of the snippets to this embossed um, trim that I've had in my stash for yonky poos bits and pieces from from various sellers of lace over the years on YouTube namely uh, scrimping mommy who no longer does but this is what I've utilised. It's all been put together on the back of a piece of net curtain, which I purchased from my local Dunelm, Dun Dunelm store. I always get their name wrong. And I've just cut off a, a bit as per Tina's instructions, two and a half, three inches wide. And then it is a long old business to put the um, snippets of lace and stuff onto a good length of the um, curtained material. But I went through Dunelm's um, uh, bargain basement box, so none of this has actually cost a whole lot to put together. The time involved, however, is a completely different matter. So that is the snippet as per Tina's um, tutorial. And when it is done, you then get an envelope like so and make yourself a, a template from the envelope. And this is just a box standard. Don't know what the size is, but clearly if you've got an envelope floating around that you can take apart, and make a template from that is what you do and then you go ahead and put it all together to make this lovely lovely fabric envelope now I have embossed it as you can see I've used little appliques some um, wonderful seam binding that was gifted to me by scrimping mommy 
a little while ago you can see all the bits of the snippet um, roll that I've used. I've done a lot of machine stitching, some hand stitching um, to form this lovely envelope which due to the fabric content does actually come out to be a little bit bigger than it's it, how, it, how it starts. The closure is the wraparound of the seam binding. I've used little floral appliques, leaf appliques. Um, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but the finished article I believe is just gorgeous. It doesn't matter that it slopes off one way or the other, that there are these wonderfully ragged edges because at the end of the day it is a handmade fabric envelope and you know it's lined on the inside with a polyester cotton to keep the form of the envelope there and then on the inside is this lovely little journal which I am absolutely thrilled with. This is what it was about, to have a little journal. It, you can see it's um, one leaflet in it or one signature in it. This is where Artie Mays comes into the mix and I've cut about um, doily paper doilies that have been coffee dyed. They're ropey, they're falling to bits, but that's the look. And then there are lots and lots of pages, which I've stamped, added a bit of... Um, hmm. I've forgotten the name of it. This washi tape, it came to me, all in a oneness like this, a little bit of stamping through it, throughout, and then when you get to the centre pages, as you go along, you find that there is another of the doilies, and I've turned it into little pockets. Here is a wonderful um, tag. I've not used it as a tag, it's just a little something to put into the pocket. If a year was tucked inside of a clock then autumn would be the magic hour which I think is absolutely gorgeous. You'll see I've etched a little little bit of the um, stickles glue that I love to use on it just to lift it again and make it look even more pretty than what Artie Mays has done in my opinion, but that's me, I like a little bit of glitter. And then here is the postcard that comes as part of the freebie. It's just, just delightful and it, better than that, it marries up nicely with all the colours that I've used. I forgot to mention this bit, this is the cutout that I did and just pop that into the pocket there to look as if it's coming up from there quite nicely. But that is that free paper from Artie Mays, which is just stunning. And then you go on through again, lots and lots more pages that have been stamped, but in the end of the day it's a writing journal. And then there are little areas like this front and back where you can put in little bits and pieces that you want to keep safe. And then another little tuck it pocket here, tuck spot pocket here, which completes the little journal. It doesn't need a closure because at the end of the day it sits in that little wallet. I've decorated it with another bit of the snippet, just cut it down to size because I did want the craft card to be a big feature of the journal. It is all put together with um, chipboard which makes up the covers so it's a hard journal, it's not soft and folded over 
which I believe Tina did in hers uh, and then that sits in there in all its loveliness. You then pop over the closure, make sure that your seam binding is there and ready just to tie off and that is one lovely lovely project that I am delighted with I have to say I hope as always you feel inspired by what I've shared with you I hope you go and check out Artie Mays the freebie is actually on her Facebook group but you need to be a member of that to access it of course and then I will leave the link to Tina's tutorial on how you put this lovely little something together. As I said, it takes a lot of work, but I believe the end result is well worth what you have to put into it to complete it. So thank you to Tina for a great tutorial. Um, I'm not going to offer this up as a giveaway, but if somebody wanted to purchase it, then all you'd need to do is contact me. Um, it's there if that is what you want, but if it doesn't sell, then I'm more than happy to have it in my little group of makes. I will go on to make another because I've got the other snippet there, but it is a timely project that you need to... Uh, invest in. So that said, happy crafting everyone, take care and stay well. Bye bye for now.